welcome back everyone to this latest edition of the late night review i'm glad that you're watching and um, i hope that many 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 people start to watch this because i think it's it's one of the best uh, shows on youtube the late night review i think it's really in all my videos i think are really good and i think this is one of the best undiscovered youtube channels so my hope is more and more people will start watching and enjoy the videos and more people will see the movie reviews and um, the artwork that i've done and worked so long and hard uh, making over the years and then even you know the exercise videos too and whatever else i decide to put on the channel but uh, the movie reviews are getting more views than anything i do so that's why I'm doing uh, quite a few movie reviews nowadays. This channel was originally for my art and uh, I um, reluctantly became a YouTuber. I never really wanted to, but I figured if you want more people to see this art that you really like, uh, it would be a shame if more people didn't see it. So maybe do a YouTube channel. So that's how I got into it. And I did that for a few years showing my art, but the channel never got a lot of views and um, not even close um, so I almost gave up not well I, I really wasn't that close to giving up actually I just figured well it's just it's not um, being seen my art is not being seen and then later I discovered redbubble.com uh, and I put my paintings on there more people were watching my art and seeing my art on redbubble.com than the YouTube channel, so I thought about not continuing the YouTube channel, but I figured, well, why not keep it? You know, I'm an introvert by nature. I'm a private person by nature. Um, I So I kind of reluctantly uh, did the YouTube thing, and I figured, well, I read Bubble. More people are seeing my art on Redbubble, so why continue the uh, YouTube channel? But I did, uh, because I do occasionally like making these videos um, I don't mind appearing uh, like this and um, even though I'm reclusive you know I'm an introvert by nature I enjoy making videos about topics that I like the arts uh, and movies that I really enjoy uh, athletics you know I, I kind of reluctantly put my exercises on the uh, my wife the reason I started doing that is my wife kept saying you should put your monthly boxing and martial arts workout uh, on YouTube because I wasn't getting many views on the channel and I reluctantly did it and that got more views than my art uh, videos normally get so I started doing exercise videos once in a while like once a month those got more views than the art and so I did that but then I did a movie review something I've always thought about doing because I like there's a lot of movies I have nostalgia for especially from the 80s and some of those movies influenced some of my art. So I figured that's a nice way to tie the art in. And a lot of the movies I talk about did influence my art, including the one tonight that I'm Escape from New York, one of my favorite movies of all time, uh, directed by John Carpenter, starring Kurt Russell, just so many good actors and actresses in here. Um, Adrian Barboa is in here. And um, I, uh, but anyway, what I was saying about the channel is that uh, my movie reviews are getting more views than any videos that I've done. But I hope that uh, you share this video, get more people to watch, because I really think my channel deserves more views. And I, you know, I'm not being arrogant or anything, but I think that this is the best or one of the best undiscovered YouTube channels. And I know what it is. I know what I need to do to grow the channel. You know, I should be on Twitter, Facebook, all the social media. And if I did that, I'd get more views. If I open the reopen the comment section, I probably get more views. All those there's some really successful channels that don't have the comment section um, at all. You know, they've disabled it like I have. Uh, the reason, by the way, that if you don't know, um, I might have explained this in a video or two a, a couple years ago. One of the reasons I took the comments down and disabled the comment section is um, I started getting scam comments and I didn't want to police that anymore. 
something called SM Zeus. I don't know if you've ever heard of it, but there were comments in the comment section that if you clicked on it, it would take you to a site called SM Zeus and they you can pay them to give you subscriptions and views and grow your YouTube channel, but it's unethical and I can get kicked off YouTube for that. So I didn't want anything to do with it. Never heard of it before, never got involved with it. So I immediately deleted those comments. I held comments for review. I started holding all the comments for review so I can see what comments uh, are appropriate to put on and hold the ones that aren't because there was people like if you click certain comments there were dirty pictures there was a couple comments where there was a, a couple young ladies showing their bodies and a kid can click on that kids can click on that or anyone can click on that and i wouldn't know about it and they could see it and it would take them like to that sm zeus thing that i told you about so there was a different there was different comments that we're getting through even when I put it on hold for review because on YouTube you can choose hold for review. It wasn't working. The SM Zeus stuff and other things were getting in even when I held them for review. So that's why the comments are disabled. Um, that's why I don't have comments anymore because I have to police that. And a few of them got in when I wasn't here. A few of them got in and I didn't know it. And I, I found them after the fact. So I didn't want any trouble for the channel. So I disabled all the comments just in case you were wondering. And uh, not only that, but I'm not a social media person anyway. I always figured to myself, if YouTube becomes a stress in my life, if it becomes something that's a burden, I don't want to do it anymore. So I know what it takes to grow the channel, but I also know that I don't want this to be a stressful thing. I want this to be a thing I enjoy doing. Being someone that's an introvert and I don't like social media, I think it could be very toxic. No offense, but I think, as you probably know, it could be very toxic. There's enough stresses in this life and in this world that we live in without adding to it. So I disabled all the comments so people wouldn't see bad pictures or that SM Zeus thing and, you know, other stuff that uh, was inappropriate and, you know, like scams and things like that. I didn't want to police that. Be very stressful so i disabled all the comments just in case you were wondering and uh i know i went on too long there we're supposed to be talking about escape i'm supposed to be talking about escape from new york which was always one of my all-time favorite movies directed by john carpenter just a, a director i've always always admired and always enjoyed i think he's a just a master at his craft john carpenter as a director and a composer I think he's very good as a composer and uh, Alan Howarth also um, helped making the music in this. I think it's another great score, uh, just like Halloween, uh, Christine, They Live, you know, all the, the music that he's done, um, just fantastic. And also, um, there's a lot of actors in here that are, that are good. Um, Kurt Russell's always been one of my favorite actors. Um, Ernest Borgnine's in here, um, Tom Atkins, who I wish had a bigger role. I, I don't know why, but I wish he would have had a lot more screen time. I like him a lot. Lee Van Cleef is in here. Donald Pleasance, one of the greats in Halloween, of course. And, and he was in a movie, a biblical movie, a long time ago where he actually played the devil. And he fit the part with those eyes and his, you know, his talent as an actor and his expressions and everything. He played the devil and it was called The Greatest Story Ever Told, where Max von Sydow played Jesus Christ. Great movie, a yeah, classic. If you want to see a really good biblical movie, you should see it. I think that it's, it's really a good movie. Um, the Passion of the Christ was an awesome movie and it was more accurate. It was more realistic than The Greatest Story Ever Told, but The Greatest Story Ever Told was a classic. If you haven't seen it, you should watch it. It's very well done, great acting, very prestigious, very classic. Everyone in there does a good job, and there's actors in there. I think Charlton Heston plays John the Baptist, if I remember right, and um, there's a lot of good actors in there if you haven't seen that movie. Donald Pleasance plays the devil, and he tempts Jesus when he's in the desert. And that's very interesting. Very well done. But anyway, I'm back to Escape from New York. 
you know, so many um, people in here that you've probably seen in other movies. Um, Adrian Barboa is in here. She was in The Fog, another good John Carpenter movie. And also Harry Dean Stanton. He was in uh, Red Dawn. He played the father of Patrick Swayze and Charlie Sheen. And that was another good movie. And uh, But this movie is an awesome movie. If you haven't seen it and you like sci-fi, action, futuristic movies that are kind of dark this is right up your alley it's a very good movie very well done and i believe that it was actually mostly shot in st louis i think that most of it was shot in st louis and i believe there was a fire in st louis before they filmed this and they were a lot john carpenter and the crew they were allowed to use those areas for this film and uh, just it was great and i thought the location was great this movie also influenced some of my art. If you've seen my art, you know how I paint the buildings and the street lights and the rain, the puddles, the bushes, and all that. And uh, there's an eerie, there's an eerie, it just, um, wanna let you know this. And I didn't notice it when I saw it um, multiple times a long time ago. But after 9-11, and a few years after 9-11, when I started revisiting this movie, I noticed something creepy and eerie at the beginning of this movie. Uh, Air Force One was, was hijacked by these uh, terrorist group, and then Donald Pleasance was on the plane. And, of course, he bails out but and crashes into a building in this pod. But this plane, Air Force One, is about to crash in New York. And... Um, it goes at the beginning of this movie it's eerie you see this plane going right for the trade center right for one of the twin towers and i'm not sure if, if they used a real photograph of the twin towers or if it was a matte painting done by james cameron in this particular scene because james cameron did uh, a little bit of the photography i think most of it by dean cundy but james cameron did a lot of matte paintings for Escape from New York. He worked on this movie quite a bit with art and he did a lot of matte paintings and did a great job, but the plane goes right towards one of the towers and it doesn't crash into the tw uh, one of the twin towers, I don't believe. I think it's another building next to it, but it goes right for the tower and it was eerie how it looked. It looked similar to 9-11 when the, right before the plane went in and it reminded me of that. You know, I. I was on the couch sleeping Tuesday morning. Someone woke me up when I was sleeping on this couch and told me what was going on, and I started filming it. I mean, not filming it, but recording it. I was watching the news. I put a VHS tape in and started recording. It was right after the second plane hit. That was just horrible. But, you know, I just... But this movie, when you see Escape from New York, there's a scene at the very beginning where you see this plane going right towards the Twin Towers, and it's eerie, you know, it just kind of took me back to that Tuesday morning. And it was obviously, it was happening, 9-11 um, took place during the day, but this was a nighttime shot of the plane going towards the uh, Twin Towers, but it crashed into a different building rather than the Twin Towers. That was just, it's eerie. But uh, uh, if you haven't seen this movie, I suggest checking it out. It's really well done. The action's good. The, the scenery is awesome. The buildings. I love the way buildings look, especially at night, especially when the lights are turned off for some reason or when they're on. But a lot of my art shows buildings with the lights off. And Escape from New York has that in it. And it's cool. I really think it's good. Um, they pulled off great special effects. They got in contact with a company that did really good special effects for a small amount of money to make Escape from New York and did a great job. And um, yeah, I think everyone in here did a really good job. The story is, is cool. I like how um, the story is. You, they, have, they made an entire prison out of Manhattan Island and Kurt Russell has to go into this very dark place, into New York, into Manhattan to rescue Donald Pleasance, who's the president, and get him out of there. Uh, Snake Plissken, the character of Snake Plissken, is really a tough guy. He's, uh, John Carpenter says he's a bad guy. He'll shoot you dead. He's a gunfighter, and he is. He's a, he's a tough guy. 
I think he does have his moral line, though. I, I do think that he's, you know, not a completely dark character at all. I think he's dark. He's got a dark side, and he's kind of in it for himself, and he doesn't really want to make friends with anybody, and he just wants to do what he has to do to complete his task, whatever it is at the time, to get where he needs to go. Uh, but he does have a side where he, I think if it came down to it, you know, if there's innocent people who are really, really in trouble and there's a gang after him, I think he would open fire and help those people. I think he's dark, but not, I don't think he's just a bad guy. I actually think that, you know, he does have good parts to him, but he's a tough guy. He's a guy you wouldn't want to mess with. He wouldn't take anything from anybody. <laughs> very good uh, with his guns or any other weapons that he has and uh, rough guy and perfect for this setting i think it's a, not only is a perfect character for the the task and the plot but kurt russell really brings him to life i think kurt russell is one of the best actors of all time not I mean, he's not just an action star not just a movie star uh, not just a guy who does action. I mean, he's done comedy. He grew up as a Disney kid. He was in a movie with Charles Bronson. Two of my favorites, Bronson and Russell. He, when he was a kid, he was in a Western, I believe, with Charles Bronson. He grew up professionally trained, I believe, you know, doing his lines, working at Disney. Then he uh, played Elvis. Was, I think it was a John Carpenter movie. I think he directed that, and uh, he played Elvis. And he played comedies, adventure comedies, Overboard. He was in Overboard with Goldie Hawn. And um, just an all-around good actor, good action star, too. He's always been one of my favorites, and he's perfect in this. Very, very talented in many different ways. He can play many. A lot of people don't realize he. one of his early roles, he played a bad guy. It was a true story about a mass murder that took place. I think it was in... Austin, Texas. Uh, Charles Whitman, I think, was the mass murderer, and it was called The Deadly Tower. I think it was an older movie with Kurt Russell, if memory serves me right. Uh, it was called The Deadly Tower, and Kurt Russell was the killer. He was on, he was a snipe, he was a Marine trained um, sniper, I believe, or at least he was in the Marines. I don't know if he was specifically a sniper, but he got up on top of a tower and he started taking people out from that tower. And it was a true story starring Kurt Russell. So he could play almost anything. And that, that was a movie that I, I haven't seen for years, but I remember parts of it. And it's probably worth checking out. As far as I remember, it was. And it was, it was pretty good. But yeah, Kurt Russell. I mean, so many movies I like him in. Tombstone, Breakdown, this one, Escape from New York. Escape from L.A. was a good movie, too. I like Escape from New York better, but I think Escape from L.A. was good. And um, he's always been one of my favorites. If you haven't seen this, uh, please check it out because I think it's a really good movie. It's definitely worth buying for sure. It's, it's one of my all-time favorite action slash sci-fi movies. Wish Tom Atkins had a bigger role in here. Maybe he was doing something else uh, with this at the same time. I don't know. Uh, another one of my favorites, but Kurt Russell playing this character, and then you have Ox Baker playing that big guy, that wrestler, you know, he was a professional wrestler, really an interesting guy, a big guy, perfect for the role. I like the fact that he was in here as someone grew, who grew up watching wrestling, just I don't know if I'll ever do videos about wrestling, I'm not sure about that, but I loved wrestling. That was my big thing when I was a kid, just watching wrestling with Hulk Hogan and Mr. Wonderful and, you know, all those guys. So many I can name, but this is a video about Escape from New York. But Escape from New York is a really good movie, and I think the music is, it's a perfect match. And I got nostalgia for it. I remember late at night watching this movie and the music came on. I think the music is very remember. It's very memorable. It's easy to remember, as with a lot of John Carpenter composed scores. And this movie has good acting. It's well done. It's all about atmosphere, I think. Not only about atmosphere, but with John Carpenter, atmosphere really draws me in. If I don't really like the look or the atmosphere of a film, it'll be hard for me to get into it. 
John Carpenter style always pulls me in. Always pulls me into his movies. Always. Atmosphere, atmosphere, atmosphere. One of the reasons I loved Halloween 2 so much is because of the atmosphere. It almost seemed like a John Carpenter directed movie. And it just, Rick Rosenthal directed it, but I think there was a lot of input from Carpenter in part two. And it seems so much like a John Carpenter movie just because of the atmosphere. But yeah, John Carpenter has an atmosphere in his movies that I like. His style is a style I like. I'm sure it comes a lot from his, you know, just sitting by himself, maybe just thinking about what to do when he makes a film. When he, when he was actively making movies, thinking about what to do. I think a lot of that style and atmosphere comes from those moments where he kind of was probably, I'm just guessing, but probably by himself thinking about how it's going to go, what it's going to look like, what it's going to be like. And I think that his style is awesome. Always liked his style. And um, uh, this is a movie that is one of his best. It's always in a fight. Escape from New York is like always in a struggle for my top two or three John Carpenter movies. It's always... Uh, Halloween is usually number one. Sometimes I like Escape from New York just as much. But uh, if I really were to be honest about it, it's always a fight, I think, between... Um, that Halloween's number one, and Escape from New York, The Thing, and They Live are kind of fighting for the second or third spot. It's hard. Maybe I'll do a ranking one day in the future of his movies. But, uh, yeah, this movie is uh, very well done. And if you like John Carpenter, you'll especially like this movie if you're into action, sci-fi. Can't say enough about it. Probably going a lot longer in this video than I um, plan, but it was an opportunity to let you know a few things about the channel as well. And uh, I can't, you know, I did a Halloween video uh, not too long ago, and um, I really worked hard on it. I liked it a lot, but it was 48 minutes, and other YouTubers, they can put those videos up for like 40 or 50 minutes or an hour or whatever. But I'm going to try to make my videos, keep them kind of short. That one went a little too long and you almost never saw it. Because the area I moved to now, the area, it's so hard for me to upload videos. It's so slow. Sometimes you get towards the end of those 40, 50 minute videos and it deletes. And you do it again, you wait five or six hours and it deletes. So I don't do any hour videos anymore on my channel. I'm going to try to keep them. This one's gone too long already. It's gone. It's almost 23 minutes now. So I'm going to wrap it up here. But in the area I live in, I can't keep, you know, I, I'm going to try to keep my videos less than, uh, at, at the most, maybe they won't be like 40 minutes, but I'm going to try to keep them around 30. And for these movie reviews, maybe 10 or 15 minutes, because the area I live in now, this area, it's so hard to um, upload. They delete. I almost, you almost never saw that Halloween video, but I'm glad you did. It was funny, uh, you know, ranking all the Halloween franchise plus the comedy I threw in there. You almost never seen that. And there was actually a boxing video that I prepared where I boxed, you know, I did my boxing and martial arts um, workout for over an hour. And like an hour and 15 minutes of just hard work. And I, I, you never saw it because it couldn't upload. I tried it over and over again. It was like, you would have seen it maybe a month and a half ago if it was successfully uploaded, but I, it, I couldn't upload it. So I'm gonna have to keep my videos about 40 minutes tops, but I'm gonna try to make it like, um, for the movie reviews, like 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And maybe certain videos try not to go over 30. That was very hard to upload that Halloween video, which was over 48 minutes, I believe, if I remember right. Anyway, check out Escape from New York. I hope you enjoyed this movie review of it here on the, the late night review with all the lights and this uh, exit over here, this door. I can really walk out there, you know. I can actually walk outside, <laughs> but... Anyway, please share this video and uh, like and subscribe and especially share this and subscribe. And uh, until next time, 
Take care, everybody. I hope you enjoyed it and have a good night.